Good evening, everybody. Welcome to this first lecture in this new lecture series that IIT Kanpur is starting, titled "Making of a University." We are extremely happy and grateful to Professor Sudhir Jain, uh, who is going to deliver this first lecture. Uh, before I talk about, uh, before I introduce the speaker, let me take this opportunity to request Professor Manna, our director, to say a few words. Dear colleagues and friends, and a special welcome to Mrs. Sudhir Jain. Uh, as Professor Sangi said, this is going to be the first uh, lecture in this series. And as an academic society, we believe in interaction and uh, interaction which uh, promotes more of dialogue. Uh, Professor Sudhir Jain is uh, well known in the academic community for the tremendous amount of energy he carries with him. In any meeting, if he is around, uh, after a while, everybody will have to take notice of his presence in the meeting. And for good reasons. Now, it is a huge challenge to set up an institution, and that too, an ins institution of the order of IIT. So we are all aware that now we have 16 IITs, but until recently it used to be 7, actually 5 plus 2. And from that 7 to, I would say, uh, 13, 12 or 13, and then a few others were added, like BHU is already one of the oldest institutes in the country. So the new set of IITs, so-called new set of IITs, uh, Gandhi Nagar is one of them, a very prominent one. And it is a humongous challenge to uh, set up an IIT because these IITs were created without equity plan. So they had to start their whole journey on a uh, temporary campus. So hiring faculty, constructing buildings, setting up laboratories, workshops, and most importantly, attracting students of uh, good caliber and at all levels, not just on So all this put together, this measures a very, very large uh, uphill task. And whatever experience Professor Jain has gathered uh, in the last few years, certainly is worth learning from him, knowing from him. So when Professor Sanghi uh, wanted to create this lecture series, and when he proposed this, I certainly uh, very enthusiastically supported that uh, making of an institution is one of the most noble things we can do in our entire journey. And uh, nothing could be more uh, enjoyable to hear from one amongst us. So I certainly am uh, grateful that Professor Jain has agreed to deliver the uh, first lecture of this series and share his uh, experience. And I'm also equally grateful to Professor Sangha, the Dean of Academic Affairs, that we have thought about this kind of a lecture series and then who have taken the initiative to uh, launch the whole initiative. So thank you very much. And without any further ado, I would again express our gratitude to Professor Jain on behalf of the Institute. And we look forward to this thing. May I now request the director to present a small memento to Professor Lee Thank you. Now in this lecture series, uh, we will be inviting distinguished academicians from around the country and perhaps even from outside who have, through their visionary leadership, built educational institutions in India and elsewhere. And of course, our, the very first lecture is by our own Professor Sudhir Jain. In this campus, he perhaps doesn't need introduction, but I think uh, I, I, I do see a lot of students here who uh, he may not have interacted with. So for the benefit of those, let me introduce you. Professor Jain has received his Bachelor of Engineering from IIT Roorkee, at that time it was known as University of Roorkee, in 1979. MS from Caltech and PhD also from Caltech. 
He joined IIT Kanpur as a faculty member in 1983, uh, 84, and in June 2009, he took leave from IIT Kanpur to become director of IIT Kanpur. While at IIT Kanpur, Professor Jain taught and researched in earthquake structure engineering, mentored young researchers, trained a large number of professional engineers, and provided consulting for numerous engineering projects. He had set up the National Information Center for Earthquake Engineering at IIT Kanpur with a substantial endowment and was national coordinator for national program of earthquake engineering education funded by MHRD. He has been the dean of resource planning and generation from 2005 to 2008 at IIT Kanpur, head of civil engineering department 2001 to 2003, coordinator of CDT, QIP, CEP, chairman student placement committee and many other positions. He is currently the president of International Association for Earthquake Engineering. Professor Jain was elected a fellow of Indian National Academy of Engineering in 2003 and was conferred the life membership by the New Zealand Society for Earthquake Engineering in 2013. It is my pleasure and honor to invite Professor Jain to deliver his lecture. Providing this opportunity, uh, I have uh, talk, talked about IIT Gandhinagar in huge number of places, but nothing gives me more joy than to talk here. Uh, I was uh, 25 years old, actually, and officially less than 25 years old. Uh, when I returned back from India, from US, and I had an appointment letter at Rookie, that is where I was supposed to join. I also happened to have an appointment letter from some other places, like from Kanpur and Bombay, Madras. And I said to my head of the department at Rookie that I would like to go and visit these places so that I can develop a contact. And he said, why don't you visit them and then come and join? Uh, don't give me this joining report. So I was giving him joining report and I said, give me some time. I want to go to these places. I meet, want to meet these people. And he said, why don't you go and visit them? In the process, when I came to IIT Kanpur, I found that this was a totally different institution than uh, what I saw in India. And I ended up staying here. And that is where I have been now for 31 years. And that is where I grew from being a 25-year-old boy, if I may, uh, to uh, be now leading an institution. And therefore, whatever I am today, it is all because of IIT Kanpur, because of the colleagues here, because of the culture here, because of the environment that IIT Kanpur provides to a young person to grow. One of my favorite statements is that whenever I did any administration at IIT Kanpur, I found that my counterparts and other IITs were at least 10 years older than me. And that is what is very unique about IIT, that it gives you responsibility very early, it trusts you, and it lets you do things. And I think that has been the foundation on which uh, I have grown, and therefore it is a great joy for me uh, to talk about it. In fact, uh, uh, I don't know how many of you are Facebook addicts, I am. A uh, few days back I wrote on the Facebook that uh, I'm going to IIT Kanpur uh, and I hope uh, the audience at Kanpur would appreciate at the end of my talk how much they have contributed to building IIT Kanpur because what I am today is because of all of you. <coughs> Some six years back, six and a half years back, 2008, when the new IITs were cleared, I received four different emails with different language but same message. Uh, those emails were from Professor Thande, the director at the time, Professor Padmanabhan, the previous director, Professor Malhotra, the previous director, and Professor Anand Krishnan, the chairman of the board. Each of them asked me uh, to give my resume for the position of new IIT. And each of those four persons, I wrote back saying, I'm not sure this is what I want, allow me some time. I was pretty upset that suddenly with a stroke of pen, uh, eight new IITs were being unleashed on the country. I felt that the current IITs need to be nurtured, they need to be supported, and a lot more attention needs to be paid to the new, to the older, exist, not at the time, no older, uh, existing IITs, rather than creating a new IITs. After five weeks of introspection, I said, you know what, uh, these guys are going to do them anyway. The new IITs are going to exist anyway. And therefore, you may as well salvage uh, or make an effort to salvage one IIT and do this in a different way. And there's a very good chance that you will get fired for me. Right? And since you didn't want to do it anyway, it is good to come back. So uh, I finally gave my resume 
uh, I was called for the interview. At the end of the interview, the human resource secretary uh, asked me a question. Uh, if uh, the minister would like to give you an, appoint, uh, give you an offer, uh, which are the new IITs that you would prefer? And I said, uh, Mr. Agrawal, if you uh, send me to Ahmedabad, I'll be very happy to go. And he said, do you mean to say that if we cannot send you to Ahmedabad, uh, you would not accept any other seven places? I said, yes. That's what I mean. uh, As I was coming out of the room, one of the senior IS officers uh, sitting behind the minister came out of the room and he said, can you have a cup of coffee with me? Took me to his office and he said, I'm very intrigued with this statement that you would go only to Ahmedabad nowhere else. Uh, could I ask you what is happening? I said, nothing. If I have to leave my comfort zone, if I have to leave my little empire that I've built in my I was very comfortable, I was doing great uh, thing and I was enjoying myself like anything. I said, if I have to leave my comfort zone, I may as well do it on my terms. And out of the eight cities, I see Ahmedabad is a great city, I see the government is proactive, and I know the bureaucrats because I was working with Ahmedabad bureaucrats. Uh, for uh, the earthquake rehabilitation since 2001. So I said, I know a lot of people and, and therefore there is a good reason to believe that what I want to do can be done better in Ahmedabad than anywhere else. And therefore, if they send me to Ahmedabad, it's very good otherwise, I'm enjoying myself. Well, uh, fortunately they uh, asked me to go to Ahmedabad. Uh, I took uh, one suitcase and landed there at uh, maybe 1 o'clock or 2 o'clock in the night because the flight was a bit delayed. Uh, at Jericho. And I assume that I'm carrying this one suitcase, I will collect some more things and I might come back with two suitcases because I might not survive. You know, everybody is a director for the first time. Right? You learn on the job. Uh, I have a senior colleague who once in a while uh, gets upset with me and he gets angry with me. And I tell him, and he's much older to me, and I said, I often tell him, I said, sir, uh, allow me to learn to be a director. <laughs> I make mistakes. Right? So, uh, this is the first job I have as a director and I could not be always right. So, it is okay if you are not happy with me. No. So, anyway, uh, last six years, five and a half years have been absolutely a delight and uh, that is the story I want to share with you. Let me share with you some very quick facts. We are about 950 students, about 88 faculty, about 100 staff, B.Tech, M.Tech, PhD, Master of Science in Cognitive Science, Physics, Chemistry, Math. Uh, we started a very interesting program, Master of Arts in Society and Culture. Uh, we received, uh, we were the last new IIT to receive land, uh, July 2012. Uh, beautiful land, and I'll talk about it a little bit later. And in summer of 2015, in a few months' time, we will move there. We have graduated three batches of VTEC students, and numerous of them have become entrepreneurs. Three companies are being incubated today at IIT Gandhi Nagar. Uh, one of them is closing external funding from California-based venture funds uh, who have evaluated that company to be worth $2 million uh, in terms of value. 10 to 15% of our VTEC students are choosing to go for higher studies uh, in top American schools. Our students are on scholarship at Caltech, at Stanford, at Princeton, at Carnegie Mellon, at Austin, and so on and so forth. Many of them are studying for PhD uh, within the country. Three of them are doing PhD at IDL. Uh, which is something very, very uh, heartening that the students are not necessarily, and these are the best students of the class, they are not necessarily looking for the job which pays them very high salary but would like to study further. We also have study, study students who are very passionate about something other than engineering. We have a young lady who after graduating with us went to Srishti in Bangalore to do fine arts. And after doing that, she is now studying fine arts at uh, Texas Austin. We have another young lady who got involved in social work and is now doing a master's program at Tata Institute of Social Science. We have two students who are doing master of design program at NID in Ahmedabad. So the idea is that we would like our students to chase their passion and do what they want to dream, what they want to do. One third of our students graduate with international experience. We discourage strongly our students to write those 2,000 emails to 2,000 professors saying that I'm interested in working with you, please allow me to work with you in some way. We organize those for uh, All three batches we have had almost one third students rather. <coughs> Numerous journal papers, seven US patents have been filed by undergraduates of IIT Gandhi. One Indian patent. Uh, nobody in IIT Gandhi talks about students not coming to the class. And that is a huge thing because as we all know, 
We have very peculiar situation that students struggle very hard to get into IIT, and once they come to IIT, they struggle very hard to avoid the classes. And we think we have found a magic mantra to deal with that, and I'd be happy to share uh, that mantra. Uh, uh, but let me go through this, stop me in the field uh, whenever you feel like it. Let me just give you a sense of what kind of PhD students we are hiring. In civil engineering, we have five career faculty. I don't consider myself a career faculty. I don't take PhD students. Any retired professor, I would not call him a career faculty. We have five career faculty, and as of today, we have 17 PhD students in civil engineering. And I will just read, maybe you cannot read in the back rows. Uh, third rank of Henry College, first rank of Jadavpur, first rank of Henry College, third rank of Alibar Muslim University, third rank of VJTI, first rank of Alibar Muslim University, first rank of PhD Tech, uh, fourth rank of some college I don't know about. Uh, 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 second rank of MD College, uh, fifth rank of MIT Srinagar. These are the kind of students that we are hiring uh, for our PhD program. And I'll share with you how that has been uh, possible. We have 70 career faculty. We have PhDs from some of the best universities that you can think of, Harvard, Cambridge, Imperial College, uh, Cornell, uh, and so on and so forth. Uh, we also have the first PhD of IIT Bhuneshwar. We are absolutely colorblind in our recruitment. We don't care who you are, as long as you bring us the quality that you, uh, that you want. We also have a very ugly PhD of ISAP Kolkata. Uh, let me tell you how uh, we recruit the faculty. The most outstanding candidate will be recruited regardless of the discipline, which means that is a policy. You could be a Sanskrit scholar, you could be a music professor, you could be a mechanical engineer. We are looking for outstanding people. That's the only criteria that we are looking for. Uh, we would have very strong ownership of all decision making by the young faculty. We recruit most of our faculty through a standing committee process without going through a selection committee first. We believe that any good institution must own the faculty group. You cannot bring four experts from the rest of the country and expect them to choose the faculty for you. A classical example is that Indians have recruited daughter-in-laws for centuries and centuries without doing an external expert committee. It is the internal family that decides who is the girl who is going to become the daughter-in-law of the family. And they have done pretty good. And I believe that we have to own the responsibility. We have a slogan, higher support, but higher expectations from faculty. If somebody is not coming up to the mark, we actually let them go. After the selection standing committee, when we subject them to selection committee, if our experts say that this person's fundamentals are weak, we would not confirm it. And we have let many people go. We will give better support for research, much better than anybody uh, generally would tend to give. Just as an example, uh, we would give additional international travel support to young faculty in the initial years, which may be ranging from one lakh to three lakh over and above the CPBA kind of money that uh, is available. Liberal salary fixation, top ups from donations. Almost about 60% of our faculty would get extra money from the uh, donations. Uh, liberal moving expenses, summer salary, international experience. Uh, we have PhD students who receive on top of 16,000 rupees or 18,000 rupees uh, additional 5 or 10,000 rupees of scholarship out of the soft money. And the idea was that. If right in the beginning you can bring some really talented faculty and you can really bring talented PhD students, then there is a chance that there might be a good chemical reaction in terms of scholarly pursuits. Uh, we have policies on how we will support a PhD student if he does not come with a GATE, CSIR, NAT type of scores. Uh, we give up to 2 lakh rupees for international travel to PhD students and we have just launched about a couple of years back a scheme where every PhD student is allowed to use $12,500 to go overseas for a semester. And the idea is that my PhD student must receive the same international quality experience and teaching, um, learning and research experience that he or she would get anywhere in the world. That is what our effort is being. Uh, just to give you some statistics, because I had an older slide that I put it together today, 2013-14, uh, uh, we had 22 faculty members who were not regular faculty for one year or more duration, out of which 10 of them are those who are separated from IIT Bombay or IIT Khan. We have had 16 faculty members for a semester or less. We have till date, or at that time, 2013 14, 23 faculty members who were not of Indian origin, 11 of them in that very semester. 
Our effort is to bring a lot of international visiting professors to the students to bring a lot of diverse ideas and diversity in our system. Uh, we also have a system of guest professors, distinguished honorary professors, uh, just to get a sense of PhD admissions. Uh, this year we handled 16,000 applications for PhD admissions and our acceptance rate was like 0.7%. Out of the 171 PhD students, 39 of them have a degree from the IIT system. 19 are top rankers of top engineering colleges, 23 of them have gained percentile of more than 95. Uh, same thing happens with uh, MTEC 1. Let me show you how we deal with our undergraduate program. The most important key element of our undergraduate program is we will treat them as adults. In the first Senate meeting or the second Senate meeting, we passed a resolution, we shall not deal with the parents, we shall not send them the grade cards, and we will make the students responsible for his or her actions. On the first day of the students coming with the parents, I tell the parents, I don't want to see you tomorrow morning. I would not like you to hang around here. And I would like you to leave the student alone, let him or her go. After my talk, there's a tea break, and my faculty have a workshop with the parents, explaining them why it is good for them to leave this young man or woman grow. We start from there. We then do a five-week foundation program. For five weeks, from 6.30 up to 9.30 in the night, uh, the students go through a very rigorous program which starts with a sports and physical activity, a uh, lot of creativity, music, dance, drama, painting, sketching, communication, leadership, teamwork workshops, values and ethics, societal awareness and concerns. Just to give a sense to you, when Kala Satyarthi received the Nobel Prize, a lot of people said we hadn't heard about it. We, we hadn't about, heard about who is Kala Satyarthi, right? Uh, he happened to be, for example, at IIT Gandhinagar to talk to the first year students and inculcate in them the societal concerns uh, before he got to Nobel Prize. So those are the kind of people that we collect, bring to the students so that students will become better citizens. We have compulsory courses on biology, compulsory courses on design innovation, a compulsory course on uh, world civilization. We require eight courses in humanities and social sciences. I believe that today this is the highest humanities and social science content in any engineering curriculum in the country. And we believe that that is something that is going to pay very good dividends to our students in the years ahead. A lot of emphasis on sports. Every student goes through a Viva OC every semester. We started to do that with undergraduates and then our masters and PhD students said, how come you don't do that for us? And we said, we thought you guys are grown up, you would not want it. They said, no, no, we want it. So we have now started to do Viva OC for the masters and PhD students. We have three people who will meet every student, uh, discuss with him his studies, his extracurricular interests, his concerns about his health, welfare, mental uh, concerns, whatever, and each of those three persons will fill up a separate form uh, designed for those three attributes and we will track that student. Right? Uh, we have a very interesting attendance norm that makes sure that every student comes to the class. And uh, that is a secret. Anybody who is interested, I'll share that secret. Uh, very liberal branch in policy, a lot of emphasis on projects and presentations. Uh, we are very passionate about trusting our students to learn by themselves. We don't believe that you need to teach them thermodynamics for them to learn thermodynamics. We think that those days are gone. We think that they are so smart, they can learn anything that they want to do. And therefore, we encourage them to do what they want to do. In this case, we were first year students at the time. They decided that they would buy an auto rickshaw. We helped them in, paid for the auto rickshaw from the market. And they converted it into an electrical machine. Right? They said we will make it battery operated machine. Now they're during the summer, first year kids turning it into an uh, electrical machine. Wow, you cannot imagine the passion that they will bring in learning, in doing it. Right? And that to us is what is real learning, not going to the classroom and teaching what is an electrical uh, 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 rickshaw. And number of projects of this kind, uh, we don't give any credit for those things. One of the slogans at IDK Dengar is you are not mercenaries, everything doesn't come for credit. You must do things if you feel like doing it, must not do it if you don't feel like it. Be our guest if you don't want to do anything. Right? Because we are treating you as adults, <coughs> it is your life, you want to make it, welcome. You want to mess it up, you are more than welcome. Right? My counselor will tell the students, my counselor will tell that we have two uh, psychological counselors, trained psychological counselors, and she will tell them, it is bad for you to drink, it is bad for you to do bad things. Still, if you want to do it, it's your life. If you tell me where you are drinking, and if you are in trouble, I can come and rescue you. 
if you smoke and ruin your health and you won't need any help with me from me to go with you to the doctor i will come with you but it is your life you want to smoke you want to drink you want to do any bad things be, be your be your uh, be uh, you know responsible and do what you want uh, we received a small little award for that uh, disciplinary diversity is a very very important catchword for us one of the rule in it kathir is any faculty can teach any class any course and can guide any student regardless of discipline imagine an electrical engineering professor saying i will teach a course on humanities or an electrical engineering professor saying i would like to guide a phd student in humanities right what we are saying is regardless of who you are scholarship is not bound by boundaries right and therefore you may be a phd of chemistry and i may question you for wrong phd wrong chemistry right because we don't believe in caste system that you are a chemistry guy you have a chemistry phd and i don't have and therefore whatever you say about chemistry is right and whatever i say is wrong we don't believe in that i am a civil engineer i also have right to talk about chemistry and if i am talking stupid things say so anybody should be able to talk anything we we have very very strong emphasis on creating a continuum of humanity social sciences culture heritage society science technology design of this lady that you are seeing here is Teaches, he, she teaches but uh, urdu at parkin we get her every year to teach urdu at idd is yes. sundar ayer is uh, uh, i don't know he, i don't see him here uh, sundar ayer is the one who told me about her that uh, he learned his urdu uh, from her when he was a student at parkin right and i was told by sundar ayer that students love her they just love her teaching and therefore we have been getting her very very regularly we teach sanskrit we teach ancient indian literature uh, we are now teaching chinese by a chinese scholar we are teaching french by a french boy uh, and so on and so forth we have created some number of interesting interdisciplinary centers one of them is safety center one is a design and innovation center a biomedical engineering center an archaeological sciences center uh, we have as i mentioned to you a very strong program in cognitive science we offer a two year master of science mine of a btech students we have five faculty one was from one fellow and three 13 phd scholars today in cognitive science and two phd's have been awarded in cognitive science uh, our senate has just approved a couple of days back that we will have another center formally on cognitive science as i mentioned to you that uh, we have very strong emphasis on entrepreneurship when people ask me what your btech student should be doing i typically give this same answer i want my students to be entrepreneurs and i want them to be professors these are two things that will change the society may bigger contribution than working for a multinational corporation and making a lot of money um therefore we created an incubation center three companies we are incubating first one is receiving now external funding the second one is on improving productivity or what are the pyramid uh, community third one is on intelligent home automation these are the three groups of fourth year students who are incubating now a company or uh, several companies i mean they are working on their ideas and the moment they graduate in april uh, we will perhaps hopefully have them uh, start to work with us uh, this is the uh, bottom of the pyramid this boy uh, became very passionate after his summer internship with a think think tank in bangalore he started uh, the think tank asked him to go to a slum and find out engineering problems to improve lives of uh, slum people he resisted initially didn't like it as an engineer he was expecting that in bangalore he will have a very nice cozy uh, office Uh, with nice coffee shops and uh, beer bars, uh, and here he was being sent to the slums. But at the end of one month, he decided that he sees these women who are making very little money after working very long hours, making very little money, and he said, "I must make a double change." Right? Uh, he took that as a fourth-year project. After he graduated, we gave him a special fellowship. After another one and a half year, he said, "I'm ready now to incubate a company." And today, he has set up a company. Uh, two of his classmates who were working for a multinational company, after two years, they have come back and joined. Uh, one of the BTECs of IIT Bombay has joined, and so there are now five, four IITs again uh, who are working in this company uh, to make products that will help the uh, quality of life, the earnings of the poorest of the poor in our uh, slums. Uh, one of the very important pillars of IIT Gandhi University uh, governance and thinking is community. We draw oxygen from community, and we must give back to community. We must be connected deeply, and we must make contributions. Uh, in the fourth meeting of the board of governors, uh, the uh, board approved a community outreach policy as a formal policy statement. 
Uh, community outreach is one of the five pillars of the foundation program for VTEC. Uh, we started a program, we call it a NYASA, which is targeting at children of the construction workers because we are good that we will be a construction site uh, for the next 10, 20 years. We will have continuously some construction going on, and therefore there was a great opportunity to work for children of the construction workers. And then when we started to build our campus about a year and a half back, uh, we said we must do things for construction workers' welfare beyond what is normally done in our country. And uh, we received this award from HUDCO for doing that. In fact, IIT, Gandhi, uh, in fact, IIT Council approved a resolution which said that every IIT should follow what IIT Gandhi did. Uh, <coughs> these are some of the pictures. For example, these two pictures. This is a little school that is run in Chak, here on the temporary campus. This gentleman is paid salary from the donations that community of at IIT Gandhi, the faculty and staff, they get deduction done from their salary every month. And using that money, the money is piled, and this gentleman is uh, paid a salary. These are students of IIT Gandhi. These are VTEC students. And they are very deeply involved in these initiatives. These are all run by the students. We only sometimes go there to encourage them. Uh, this is typically how a 26th January or 15th August is celebrated. Every time there is a 26th January or 15th August type of a function in the institute, the NYASA kids will come in their own way and they will sing a song, they will do some activity and we treat them as part of us. These are the kids not only of construction workers but also of nearby slums. Uh, this is a little school that is running uh, at the permanent campus site for the construction workers. Children. Again, these are monitored by our students. We don't monitor we, the, the students discovered that the many parents of the uh, children, the construction workers, they were not willing to let the kids go away from them, uh, even 100 meters or 200 meters. They wanted them to be right in front of their eyes. So these students went to them and persuaded them to let the kids come to the uh, school here. And this is uh, here outside this room. Um, they must have been distributed some uniform, and they were just uh, getting a group photograph. I don't have to show this slide to uh, this audience. This is typically how construction workers live in our country. And the concern was that if you think that our slums are bad, construction workers live in far pathetic, more pathetic condition than uh, the Indian slums. And we thought that uh, we could do something better. This is the kind of housing that we provide on our campus site. Uh, we have done some very special clauses in our contracts. The contractors are supposed to do certain things. Otherwise, there's a daily penalty on the contractor if they don't provide that kind of housing. They must provide uh, RO system for drinking water, they must provide toilet systems, and things like that. We have been very fortunate to receive almost about 10 crore rupees worth of donations, uh, which, uh, considering a very small school that we are, considering that we don't have alumni base, is a very, very decent sum. We have commitments, a written commitment of the order of about 8 crore rupees, and we are right now discussing an MOU for about another 12 crore rupees worth of donations. We have been very, very fortunate to receive support from many good uh, um, hearted people who saw that there is something interesting that is happening in IIT Gandhi and they would like to be part of that. Uh, this is the uh, typical trend. We were spending 31 lakh rupees, 95 lakh rupees, 1.72 crore rupees uh, for basically encouraging excellence, for supporting things that are not normally possible uh, otherwise. We have some very strong connections with the industry, underwriters laboratory supports our safety center for five years. Under a contract, they give an unrestricted gift to us. Uh, Rico, the Japanese company, they support us for the innovation center, a three-year contract. Uh, Nielsen uh, has been giving us very significant money now for a few months uh, for supporting our undergraduate students for international experience. The Nielsen grant is a very classical example of how success breeds success. When Nielsen people started to talk to me about, they had no clue and I had no clue where this conversation is going to go. After a while, they got very intrigued that one third of our class is getting international experience before they graduate. And that led, in that telephone conversation, for them to commit $100,000 every year to support our effort to give international experience to students. They said, I think our students are doing well. If our health can make them do much, much better, we are very happy to support them. Right? Uh, we get some money uh, from Gujarat Mineral Development Corporation, we get some money from Government of India agencies, Ministry of Health Science has created a chair with us, Communication Information Technology Incubation Center, uh, Government of Gujarat has put in money for the Center of Biomedical Engineering. A uh, lot of what we do in IIT Gandhi Nagar is not our ideas. We crowdsource the ideas, we collect the ideas, we keep our antennas open. 
I never sit in a meeting without my black tie. Whether I'm interviewing a faculty candidate, whether I'm meeting an eminent person, uh, my black tie would have sense of what we have discussed. Because a lot of people give a lot of ideas, sometimes knowing that they're giving you the idea, sometimes they don't even realize that. But we also create a lot of formal structures to create ideas, to collect ideas. And for the last five years, we do every year a leadership conclave uh, where we bring very eminent people from India and overseas, uh, sit from morning till evening, uh, and discuss four important questions that the institute is facing at that time. And Professor Thira Sanghi has been a participant to almost all of them. Uh, the gentleman here you see is uh, president of the University of Buffalo. The gentleman here is familiar to many of you in IIT Kanpur. He's Akshay Runchal, who was a professor at IIT Kanpur a long time back and now has a very successful uh, consulting company in CFD space in Los Angeles. Uh, we then created uh, another avenue, uh, we call it Academic Advisory Council. The first meeting, this meeting, can have people from the industry, this can have people from the academia, this can have people from the government, and they all can talk about where this whole shift of IDHA Delga must go. They must give a vision of where we want to go eventually, and how we can go there. But many of these people don't understand academics. Many of these people don't understand that faculty cannot be hired, fired, nurtured, supported, the way you do it in industry. They don't understand that academia is not industry. They have a lot of uh, good ideas, but some of those ideas may not work with the academy. Therefore, we create another council, uh, we call it an academic advisory council, in which we collect uh, people only from the academic side, and we discuss with them, for example, the faculty promotion criteria. That is something that we will not discuss in the first meeting that we will discuss in this meeting. We also created this year an industry partnership retreat. And here the idea is you bring people only from the industry and discuss with them in what way IT that they can work much more closely with the industry. Right? Uh, <coughs> if you ask me uh, what we are happy with today, uh, we are a six year old institution. We certainly don't wish to compete with the older writers. We certainly don't wish to be like an older writer. We certainly are not in a hurry to be an older writer. One of the important things for us is that we want to be enjoying our status as a new institution. We will be old forever. We will never be new for again. It is like once you lose your childhood and you become adult, you remain adult till you die. And therefore, we don't want to do things that should be done by older writers. We want to do things that should be done by new writers. To us, that is an extremely important thing. And therefore, uh, what you will see here is very different from what you will, and you should, and you would want to see in an older writer. Right? So we are very happy with the quality of undergraduate experience. The idea was that before the faculty resistance builds up, before the faculty size builds up, before the faculty comes and insists that Thermodynamics should be only so many courses, and solid mechanics should be at least so many courses, and uh, humanities should be this or that. Before all that happens, uh, you start to do this. Right? So the faculty uh, resistance is one of the biggest challenges that the university system has for dramatic changes. And we thought that that is something that new IT can do much faster than the older IT, and we must do that. So undergraduate experience, I think we have a lot of interesting innovations, a lot of exciting things, uh, and I think we are very happy about that. Recruitment of quality faculty and PhD students, this is something that took us more time to crack, but we think we have cracked it quite a bit. We are recruiting very high quality faculty, we are recruiting very high quality PhD students. Are we happy with it? We are not fully satisfied. We have a lot more to do, a lot more uh, distance to travel. Uh, visiting faculty program, we have a very strong visiting faculty program. We are very happy to bring anybody as a visitor. Our uh, threshold for bringing visitors is very, very good. Our idea is that we will be very liberal in bringing visiting faculty because they cannot damage us much. If somebody is nasty, somebody is acrimonious, somebody is incompetent, he will go back after a semester. He will go back after a year. He will go back after two months. Quickly, we can deal with it. But we will be very, very tough on recruiting the career faculty. Right? Because they will be here with us. Uh, we have very strong Emphasis and that has got very well diversity and integration of disciplines. You will see our faculty members talking across that, and that is something that is very exciting. Uh, philanthropic funds are excellent. I think that we have done quite well. 
uh, engaging numerous eminent persons both in India and outside has been a very strong uh, uh, benefit to us. Uh, innovations in academics, governance. Uh, but I think last bullet is what is most important. The vibrant environment, the engaged community. If there is an event and there is a lot of people who are participating in it, that shows how vibrant that institution is. And I've been challenging one of my young colleagues in social science if she can develop for me a coefficient of engagement, a coefficient of involvement for universities. Uh, and we could administer that uh, survey and evaluate how the coefficient of engagement has been improving or decreasing uh, with time for that idea. Right? Uh, the challenges in front of us are the challenges mindset of low expectations from all stakeholders. Everybody expects us to perform lower than what we think as a country we are capable of performing. Quite often I'm told we are an IIT. Because we are an IIT, we must not do these, these things. Quite often I'm told that we are a new IIT. And how can therefore we do these, these things? Right? Quite often I'm told that we are a developing country and therefore how can we have a world-class university? How can we expect our students to be rubbing shoulders with their counterparts at the University of California at San Diego and spend a semester there working in their laboratory and we pay for it. Right? Uh, quality of PhD students and faculty is still a problem in terms of the applications that we get. We would like to get a lot more applications, but a lot of people do not know that we are not a typical IIT, we are not a typical new IIT. Uh, only when they spend time on our website, they see what kind of people we are hiring, when they see what kind of activities we are doing, or when they visit us, or when somebody tells them, then they get to know. Otherwise, they have a very uh, simple uh, way to say that, okay, uh, they are new IT and therefore they may not be so good. And therefore, many top candidates don't even apply to us. Uh, lack of self-esteem in many of our UG students. We have a huge problem that here are these brightest 10,000 students in a big country like 1.2, 1.3 billion people. They crack a great exam, they come to us, and then they show low self-esteem. There is a big problem there, and we have to work on that, we are working on that. Uh, lack of mid-career faculty. One of the most important things for us is to build a culture. As a young, new IIT, uh, we can only build culture. When I said to you that in 1983, 84, when I was a young boy, I was intrigued by IIT Kanpur. It was because of the culture of IIT. Because IIT Kanpur had a very, very special culture, where as a young assistant professor, I would call somebody 20 years my senior by his first name. IIT Kanpur had a culture where you could be seamless in terms of your scholarship. IIT Kanpur had a culture or has a culture where an assistant professor could be an instructor and a full professor could be sitting as a tutor. Right? It is the culture that gets built in early years and we therefore are uh, very uh, particular that anybody we bring, whether he brings or she brings a bad culture. And therefore, recruiting mid-career faculty is a very serious problem. Why? Because uh, firstly, you want a mid-career person who is very good in his subject or her subject, who is willing to move, and finally, uh, doesn't bring too much baggage of uh, bad habits. Right? Very difficult. Uh, which means a lot of our administration is actually done by assistant professors. Uh, the chairman of the faculty search committee at IIT Gandhi Nagar has always been an assistant professor. Right. Uh, lack of alumni body of course and lack of academic administrators. We do have a problem that we don't have enough seasoned people both at the staff level as well as uh, the faculty level. <laughs> the road ahead, the challenges in front of us, uh, not standing those. What is it that we wish to do in the next few years? Uh, internationalization of the institute. Last board meeting, the board approved a white paper on the internationalization agenda of the institute. These are the things that we need to do. We think we are doing a lot on internationalization, but we went to the board with what we have done and what we want to do because that will require our extra resources, uh, very close linkages with the industry, uh, our postgraduate program, and our centers of excellence to go critical. I did not say in all my presentation that we are doing top notch research. I didn't say that. But in five years' time, I should be able to say that. And we are not in a hurry to do so. Because we think we are a young institution and it is okay if it takes a while before our faculty and our students start to publish in science and nature and whatever, the best journals of the world. It is okay to stay young. Uh, create a system where the culture of excellence and scholarship will be sustained for decades and centuries ahead. Uh, building a reputation, a lot of people should know about it, and of course we need a lot of money to do a lot of things that we do. Let me just give a sense to you about temporary campus. These are five buildings that we built in temporary campus. 
campus. We are the only perhaps new IIT where everything is at one place, where nobody is bust, where people are not running back and forth in cars or buses uh, from their home or from their uh, hostel to their classes or their laboratories. Uh, our slogan in the temporary campus is, we will provide everything you need. We may not be able to provide what you want. And there's a big difference between what you need and what you want. Right? Uh, this campus, for example, will have every amenity that you can imagine. This is, for example, the daycare center. We have 25% women faculty. They carry a faculty after them. And many of them, uh, at a certain age, where they have six-year-month baby, they are one-year-old one baby, we have a lot of young women staff, the clerks, the technicians, and we thought, if we can provide a daycare center, their life will be much easier, they can become more popular. In our temporary campus, we run a full-fledged daycare facility for children from six months to six years old. Uh, we run a hospital, we, not a hospital, we run a dispensary, we run a uh, physiotherapy center. Uh, because our students are very active in sports, they get injured quite often. And then they have to be taken to a physiotherapy center. Uh, it takes time, and we said, why not we just create it here, it's not a big deal. Uh, so all those amenities that we think are ne needed, are important, we will do here. What we will not do here is, we will not give every faculty member an independent laboratory space. Our rule is that every disadvantage has to be turned into an advantage. Everything that has been denied to us by virtue of our being a new IIT, we must convert that into our advantage. So when we didn't have space, what did we do? We said, wow, teamwork is an important mantra, everybody will share the research lab. <laughs> and then we said, why? Why do we have to have a different teaching lab of chemistry and different research lab of chemistry? Why can't the students of undergraduate go to the same lab where PhD students are doing their experiments? So today we have the same chemistry lab where undergraduates do their experiment, where PhD students of any professor would do their experiment. Works beautifully. Saves you resources, forces people to work with each other. There are no infightings because now they know they have no choice for the work. <laughs> It gets a shock when any typical chemistry person comes to us, he gets a shock during his job interview, right? Because he thinks that so many square meters, uh, such and such university gives so much, such and such IIT gives so much. He says, boss, you have to share it. We will give you enough space for your PhD student to be able to do your work, but we will not give you enough space to be able to build your independent empire. We save that much space and we use it for something else. Uh, I don't have the picture here, uh, but if you go to my Facebook page, you will see some beautiful pictures of a uh, student lounge that our undergraduates created. So we gave them a big hall and we said, this is your lounge, this is your place. We put some air conditioners and the students designed it. Just go to my Facebook, it's a public Facebook, you don't have to be my friend to see it and you'll see some pictures. Right? And they did everything by themselves. It's so much energy, so much creativity. Right? Uh, we are uh, uh, being given a 400 acre campus, uh, 400 acre land uh, on the Sabarmati Bank, which will be 20 minutes from the airport and on the opposite side of Sabarmati is the secret. Opposite side of this river is where the chief minister, the governor live. Uh, very compact walking campus, fully accessible to physically challenged persons, low rise, closely spaced buildings, excellent <coughs> landscaping and open areas, uh, no buildings earmarked for specific departments. There's no chemistry building, there's no physics building, uh, uh, and a lot of interesting uh, uh, innovations that we have done here. Uh, this is our master plan, this is how the uh, construction will be. Uh, this is the status of the construction about two months back, because these are the pictures I took for my trip to US about two months back. Uh, where you can see almost structure work is all over, we are now finishing. Uh, we had the land only in July 2012. We gave the contracts in July 2013. Right? So we are talking about 18 months, not less than 18 months of time. Uh, this is the uh, uh, housing, uh, and this is the status of the housing again. Uh, two months back, uh, this is the hostel. Again, very interesting concept in hostel. Basically, when we build a campus, we told our architects three questions. One, we want a campus that will invite people. We want that when somebody goes to Dhirindra Pati's house, Dhirindra Pati is sitting here, he's a good friend of mine from uh, 2001 days, uh, days, when somebody visits Dhirindra Pati and he asks him and his wife, which are the places to go to Ahmedabad? And they should say, you should go to Gandhi Ashram, you should go to um, Hathi Singh Temple, and you should go to IIT Gandhi. <laughs> that, that is one requirement. And that's a very important requirement for us. And I, will, I can go on into that, right? Second, it must force people to meet and interact with each other. 
because life is changing quite a bit. People are sitting in front of computers, cell phones. Uh, you can have a room where three people are sitting with each other, um, are not talking to each other. Each of them is on his cell phone, right? Where uh, you will finish a meeting and five people will come out of the room. Each one of them is talking on his own cell phone. And therefore, people are becoming very, very introverted. And we thought that this will be a requirement. And third one will be a standard requirement, low cost, low energy, low maintenance, uh, long life kind of project. Now imagine this is a student hostel. Now you want the students to meet each other, right? So there is no distinction between UG and PG and girls and boys. Very simple, right? So this is a PG hostel, this is a UG, this is a girls, things like that, right? This is all of this. And this is a mess. Right? And all of them have to walk along this. There is a chalk here, there is a square here. That is where the adda will be there. That is where the tamasha will be, right? Uh, that is where the library is there. That is where the cafeteria is there. And all these students will walk four times a day for four meals every day to come to this mess. And that is where they will meet, right? So this is like a gully, if you like, in an old town, a narrow passage through which you are bumping into each other. Right? Uh, so this is the mess, these are the, these are, these are the students coming and going into the mess. Uh, this is the uh, status two months back for the construction. Uh, this is a natural lake on our site and fortunately two months back there was a lot of rain and a lot of water so we took a picture uh, with the uh, lake in the front. Uh, so this is what it is. Let me, let me finally close uh, and I'll be happy to answer if there are some questions. Let me share with you some of the slogans, some of the uh, key things that uh, govern us. Right. Uh, staff evaluation. We will evaluate the staff for attitude and values, ownership of the institute, and competence. In that order. <coughs> I would rather have an incompetent staff who has very good values and attitude. Then I would have a very competent staff who brings negative attitude and negative values. Right. If you take bribes, if you harass people, if you shout at people, if you cannot get along with other people, you may be very, very competent. I don't want to. Thank you very much. If you have very positive attitude, you are a good team player, you are very dedicated to the institute, you are incompetent. I will teach you. All employees are required to possess three qualities. Teamwork, hard work, integrity and loyalty for the institute. Notice that this doesn't talk about competence. I believe competence will come if these three things happen. This is something that I say to every employee when he or she joins the institute. In early days, I used to write on a piece of paper like a doctor as a prescription. I used to write on a piece of paper and say, this is the prescription for you. Uh, if you are found wanting in any of these three things, you will not be confirmed on probation. And we have actually not confirmed a couple of people on probation by reminding them that this is what was told to you and you have failed in this. Right. Zero tolerance for things that no one approves. Nobody would agree that cheating in exam is a but nobody would agree. Nobody would agree that you should harass or bully other students, rag other students, harass the girls, misbehave with them. Nobody would agree that you should misappropriate money, you should take bribes, you should take commissions, you should do any hanky panky with money. On all those things, there will be zero tolerance, we will absolutely not tolerate. Right? In IIT Gandhi Nagar, we have let a student go home for a semester for looking in the answer book of the neighbor's student, neighboring student in the mid-semester exam. Not only the student who was looking, but also the student who was helping show the answer book. We sent both of them for a semester. We have sent another student home for one full year for cheating in the exam. Right? We have had 20 students, 10 of them writing proxy attendance to 10 other students. And we took a very, very harsh decision on them because we said, today you are proxying the attendance, tomorrow you will do financial jugglery by uh, forging the signature of your superior and, and cashing the check, and you will end up in jail if you don't uh, make corrections today. Uh, rest of it is all absolutely free. I told you, the students are treated as adults. We would not tell a boy not to sleep in a girl's room or vice versa. Our dean has issued an email to the staff, because our security staff get very confused about this. Right? They come from conservative background. So he has issued an email, all our students are treated as adults, please treat them as adults. As long as nobody is being harassed. Right? If your roommate is harassed, 
that you bring your boyfriend or girlfriend to your room all the time, there is a problem. But if nobody is unhappy about it, you do what you want. Right? Uh, we want to be very outward. We believe that in an academic institution, if it is a bunch of good people, they can be in sacred equilibrium. Leadership doesn't have to spend time. Leadership should not have to spend time. There should not be any reason for a university leadership to spend time on internal questions. So, if you look at recently, uh, somebody shared with me a, a vision report of IIT Kharagpur, where they concluded, or there was, I think, newspaper IIT, they concluded that uh, the director of IIT Kharagpur should spend at least 50% time uh, external relations. So, uh, one of the mantras at IIT Kharagpur is, you look outwards. Don't worry about what this guy is doing. Let him do what he wants to do. Your colleagues, your students, let them do. Don't meddle into their affairs. You go and look for other opportunities. Bring those opportunities to the institute. We will write very liberal rules, but we will be very strict in enforcement. This is a mantra that Thira Sanjay gave to me when I went to Ahmedabad. He said, you know what, in our undergraduate, our postgraduate program, we write very strict rules, and then when somebody fails that test, then we go to Senate and we ask for relief, we give them mercy, and then students got up a pattern that uh, all the rules are negotiated. So he gave me a mantra that, why don't you set the rules very low, as low as you can, and then enforce them. And I get into a problem because my own faculty colleagues, they come from a background where they would like to tighten everything, right? Uh, I remember once a discussion was happening where we said, if somebody is an IIT graduate, VTech graduate, uh, with a CPI of, I think, 6 or 6.5, and wants a PhD admission, we will liberally give him money. My colleague said, oh, 6.5, 6, my God, this is too low. How much do you want? 8, 9. I said, I'll write 9 or 8, whatever you want. But then you will come tomorrow with a 7.5 guy and say, Professor this guy is really good. Wait, I said, I'm not. So I'm writing 6, and you're welcome not to hire anybody between 6 and 8. Right? But if you want to hire somebody at 6.5, I'm giving you the freedom. Right? So we would write very low rules, but we will not pass from them. Uh, I think Anjana is not a place for un unhappy people. This is, a, this is a part of my speech in every uh, student gathering, sometimes in faculty gathering. If you are unhappy in the IIT Gandhina, boss, find some other place. Uh, we are a happy bunch of fellows, we are enjoying ourselves, building a great institution, doing our little scholarship, and living in our own world, having fun. If you are not having fun, you are coming on the wrong train. <coughs> we will help you find a train that will make it. This is not the train. We don't want unhappy people. Uh, this is another slogan that we have. It is your life, you are welcome to make a mess of it. We have, as a policy, our faculty would not tell a student why you are not coming to us. Why you are not doing the science. We treat them as a member. We have different schemes to support them. We have a progress, uh, we have something called guided progress scheme. If a student is falling below a certain level, which Senate has decided, there will be a faculty member who will monitor that student, meet him regularly, meet her regularly, guide him, handhold them. We have created another scheme called peer assisted learning where one second year student will work with two first year students and help them uh, help them you know navigate uh, difficult courses. We have created a number of support systems for the student. And we shall do that. But we shall not be sermonizing these students. We shall not tell them what to do. Right? Uh, and finally, uh, this is something that our undergraduates are very proud of because they know that uh, they are the only ones who are treated as adults. Their friends in other IITs, uh, they still have their parents receiving their grade card. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so they, 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 feel they have an attitude, you know, they have an arrogance. They say, yeah, we are adults. And they want to behave like adults. Uh, they really do a great job. If today uh, you ask me, uh, I would say that our students, uh, they have tremendous ownership of things much better than I have and much better than my faculty colleagues have. And that is very special. Uh, just to give a sense to you, we run, our students run a program called Amalthya, a technical festival, where every year they sur create surplus money. Every year. Every year they bring cash back to the institute for the last five years. And that money is parked somewhere. It is available to them for any activities. So first year we did that. Two students said, can we go to China? I said, yeah, be my guest. They went to China. They wanted to study why China is progressing ahead of India. Right. Sure. <laughs> you saved that money. You ran the program. You created those sponsorship. I didn't do all that. It's not my money. You're welcome to it. Right. So thank you very much. It has been uh, a pleasure talking to you.
How do you take it? See, the main problem typically is that the ownership of the institute is not equally shared by everyone. If today 80% of my faculty are owning the institute, and if when I expand, it becomes five times larger. If at that time also 80% of them owning the institute, this will never be a problem because student teacher ratio will remain the same. You see the point? The point is that as you grow, you become more impersonal. You lose touch and there is a sense of anonymity. Right? If today there is a 15th August flag hoisting, if out of five assistant registrars, two don't show up, I will know which two are not there. If 20 of them are there, I will know which were there and which are not there. Right? Anonymity. So as you scale up, you need to sh be sure that your ownership of the institute by the faculty, that is why I said I need coefficient of engagement. And I need to ensure that my coefficient of engagement remains fairly high. Right? The ratio of teacher to student, as long as you maintain that, doesn't matter. Yeah. Foundation program, the idea that it excels on July to middle of the office. Yeah. So don't you think whatever the students from other IT, their curriculum gets started just at the end of the July. And the IT and other guys get the starting of the curriculum by August, end of the August. So don't you think like they lack in one, one, one? You have to compress this. Big deal, big deal. How does it matter? Do I remember my thermodynamics today? If I had been taught 80% of what I was taught as an undergraduate, do you think I would be a lesser human being? But if I had learned better English, if I had learned better teamwork, if I had learned better leadership, if I had learned better communication, if I had developed taste in music and dance and drama, my life would have been more rich. I would have been a better director today if I had received better training in this. Right? Our slogan is, we will train you for your last job, not for your first job. For your last job, you will need all these traits. Our first job as a technician, as an entry-level engineer, you may not know how to design this slab, big deal, you can learn it in 15 days, you are so pretty smart, right? So how does it matter if I didn't teach you? Right? Sir, uh, you have shown a design, posture design actually, posture design. So they are actually, uh, the mayors is on one side of the wall hostel The people, <coughs> here, the students are sitting in the back, so they have to come across. These the are pretty small blocks of 200 students each. And they're very compact. So the size of this whole thing that I showed you is perhaps smaller than size of a single hall of residence of IIT. Okay, okay. <laughs> 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 These are very closely packed. Yeah. Maybe, maybe after, you can, you're asked already, maybe somebody else, then you can come back to the second question. Uh, it, it, yeah. um, why hiring a faculty? How many teaching Because PhD shows that you are Oh, oh, oh. We became experts on faculty hiring. OK. So we brought a human resource consultant to train us on how to evaluate attitude and values of a candidate. Ah, we know how to read the resume. We can see how good is his qualification. We can ask him a question or two. We can evaluate his research profile. I can send my uh, candidate's resume to Professor Dimitris Mishra or uh, uh, anyway, anybody in the, in the sphere. They will evaluate what kind of journals are there, what kind of papers are there. But what about their values and ethics? What about their attitude? We brought a human resource consultant. We, she did a full day workshop for 25 of us, including the director, to teach us the techniques by which you evaluate the candidate. We, we, also, wait, we, have, we also make every faculty candidate do a teaching session. Where undergraduates or graduates, every student fills up a form on the suitability of that candidate. Grade them on a scale. Every student will fill up that form and say, I rate this person on a 1 to 5 scale. They will, they will write nasty comments. They will write great comments. Right? It is not a rocket science. It's very easy to evaluate uh, teaching. It is very relatively easy to evaluate research. It is very difficult to evaluate attitude and values. And that is where we spend a lot of time. OK? If no more questions, yeah. What are your views on class-based innovation? You see, I will tell you some philosophical thing about uh, me. There are things that are in my control, and I'm very passionate about it. 
and there are things that are not in my control, I don't even apply my mind. I'm not an intellectual type. I'm a guy who couldn't speak a sentence of English when he graduated with an undergraduate degree. Right? I'm a person who has grown out of the basic education system where I went to schools where there were no furniture, there was not even a mat to sit on. Right? I'm not intellectually very superior. I don't care. I have a job to do and I must do that job there. Right? When I used to do work for IIT Kanpur, people used to say, how come you are not an alum of IIT Kanpur and you are so passionate about it? They say the same thing about me at IIT Kanpur. And I tell my colleagues at IIT Kanpur, the day I leave you guys, I'll go back to IIT Kanpur and I'll talk about IIT Kanpur with the same passion. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a very focused guy. I, I, I have no use focus. I really don't. Not that I'm circling a question. But I have, I have people with me in IIT Gandhinagar who will be very happy to engage with you on those discussions. I have intellectuals uh, who will talk to you. <laughs> Sunil, I have a question. Yeah. Uh, how do you foresee students uh, from overseas uh, to be doing BTECs in IIT uh, in, in uh, I don't see uh, near future BTEC uh, having much traction, but I see non-degree students, people coming for a semester, people coming for a year. Uh, and of course, we already have an Afghan student doing his master's with us. Uh, we um, have an American student who is doing a two-year MSc in cognitive science with us. We are hoping to have more and more international <coughs> students. Uh, BTEC may be a little longer, especially because our BTEC programs are very demanding. And you bring a student from overseas, and he or she flunks too many courses. And you remember, we will not, uh, we, we don't, we don't uh, do appeal and all that stuff. If you are below that level, we just give you, we have let undergraduates go. We have let undergraduates go on, under, on academic performance. So we don't see uh, that is something that we can solve easily in the near future. But maybe something. Okay? Thank you very much.